Getting started with your project can sometimes be the most difficult part. So in this video we're going to learn about some things that I do when I create a new project. This video is sponsored by Shannon Galway which is supporting me on Patreon. You can find out that and how you could support me down in the description. And let's get started. So for the first thing is the actual structure of the folders. So for example, here we have a newly created project which is just a lib folder and the main file. Here we can see the main function, the my app and also the my home page. So what I usually do is start to create the initial structure of the folders. So I usually put anything Flutter design UI related in the source folder. Inside here I create three additional folders. One called pages. One called providers and this would be depending on which kind of state management you're using. And this of course could change depending if you're using for example Redux and stuff like that. And then for the last folder we're going to have a shared. So starting at the pages folder we're going to have for example a home page. And this one is uh, where we're going to have the actual file of the home page. So there is a specific reason I'm creating a folder for this and I will show you that right now. So first off, let's move that home page logic or code to the home page folder. And let's just import the material. I'm not going to rename the classes as of now. That will just be the same. But I will usually just rename this to whatever I call the file. So this would not be my home page, instead just home page. So the reason we create a actual folder for this is that usually I have a uh, another folder in this one, which is called widgets. So the reason I have a folder called widgets is that I can extract as many of these widgets that I can into my own stateless or stateful widgets. That way I have a very component based building system. So for example, if we would have a home page and that would be a profile page and then for the custom circle avatar widget that would reside in the widgets. And now, for example, if we would, so let's just add one. So custom circle avatar. So we're not going to create code for that, but I, this is just an example. So for example, you would have that there, but what if you would have, for example, a custom text field and that one is not specific for the homepage, then I would have the shared one for that. Or if, for example, you're using specific dialogues that are shared between the whole app, then I would have that in shared. So for example, for dialogues, I would create another folder called dialogues. And then have a file called, for example, mydialog.dart. So that's the specific structure I'm using for uh, the UI. So then we have the providers. And this is pretty straightforward. Here we would have all of the kind of global state management. And when I say global, I mean just uh, app wide management. So, for example, uh, you could have the same state for home page and profile page that then would reside in providers right here. Uh, so for example, my provider dart and that would reside inside the providers. And that's pretty much what I build upon. So that's the foundation I use. Now that's all for the source folder. Now we also have some other additional folders. So for example, I have one called models. And here I have my different models. So for example, person.dart or something like that. Uh, I also have a folder for my different services. So the way I'm using the services folder is pretty much a structure with uh, abstract classes and then the specific implementations. So for example, let's say we have a person service. And of course, you don't have to name them with service. This is just an example so you can see. And for example, if we have then Firebase 
I add a folder for that. And I call it something like Firebase Services. And then the, I have a Firebase Person Service. I will not show you the specific implementations as of now. This is just how I structure them. And here, of course, we would have like a person.rs. So that would be the basic structure I use. And then, for example, I could have a folder that I use for different utils, for example. Then I would create another folder called utils. And that could then be used and it's more of a top level thing that you can easily access. So that is all for the uh, structure of the project. Now what I also do is have a correct analysis file. So what this does is that if we go and look at the code is that right now we have this code which looks fine but if we would add for example a, a YAML file for this and this one is going to have all of the specific rules that we're going to have in the project. I'm going to just paste one that I usually use and you can check that out down in the description. So one additional uh, I have to this is also the implicit dynamic to false. I will also link a great article by Remy uh, which created a provider package uh, where he explains some of these concepts. So now looking at the homepage, we can see that we have some warnings. So the most notable is the preferred declaration of the const. And if we add that, we can see that these conflicts go away. And this is used to enforce you a better structure of your project. So you can have more consistent stylings or a more consistent project. And for the last thing I do with all of my projects, which arguably is like the most important one, is setting up a CI CD system. So this can be set up with either GitHub, GitLab, CodeMagic, Bitrise, that's up to you. I have a video of setting it up with CodeMagic, which you can probably check up at the top right here. I will also link it down in the description. And these are the three major things that I do with all of my projects. If you liked the video, please let me know by liking and subscribing to the channel. Uh, it means a lot. And also let me know down in the comments what you would like to see next. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.